are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. I'm a relationship hacker. I come from a Cuban family. Uh, I grew up in Miami, but I grew up in a predominantly black, very poor neighborhood in Miami called Liberty City. From there, I went on to Atlanta, studied uh, at Emory University, and had the honor of being a congressional aide to civil rights hero Congressman John Lewis. And after that, I went to Chicago and got my MBA and my law degree at the University of Chicago, where I also got to learn from another hero of mine, taught constitutional law by then Professor Barack Obama, and now the President of the United States. We fell in love while we were in graduate school. Now that's John and I, not the President and I. <laughs> we found great success in corporate America, uh, got married, bought our pretty house in our pretty suburb, had our two pretty little girls, and we're living out our picture-perfect comfortable Cosby life. But when we analyzed the rest of the black community, we saw that things were getting worse and worse for most black people. We felt guilty about that. We felt bad about that. So we gave more to our black church. We gave more to the NAACP and the UNCF. Wasn't that enough? Philanthropy is commendable, but it must not cause a philanthropist to overlook the circumstances of economic injustice which make philanthropy necessary. Dr. Martin Luther King said that. Now, what is this economic injustice he was talking about? What are these circumstances he was talking about? In America, in the Asian community, the dollar circulates among the community's banks and retailers and professionals for about 28 days before it leaves the community. In uh, Jewish communities, that circulation period is about 19 days. In WASP communities, uh, predominantly white areas, if you will, uh, the dollar stays uh, 17 days. Uh, my Hispanic brothers and sisters keep their dollar for about a week. And in the black community, the community Dr. King was slain fighting for, we keep our dollar for six hours. Let me tell you what that means in real life terms. That means in Asian communities, uh, Asian kids get to see business owners who look like them every day, all the time. There are Asian banks and insurance companies and grocery stores all over the community, and those uh, businesses employ from the community, and the families take care of those businesses and vice versa. Asian unemployment in America is at a low 4 to 5%. Most Asian Americans, over 50%, are self-employed or employed by Asian firms. That those circumstances, that economic and business growth, lead to high educational attainment, uh, there's uh, business and political power, low poverty, strong businesses, uh, low crime in Asian neighborhoods. Six hours in the black community, let me tell you what that means. That means that black kids can't see business owners who look like them every day. There are no black-owned grocery stores and dry cleaners and pharmacies and clothing stores locally owned in the black community. So the people there cannot get jobs, much less create jobs in the community. So black unemployment in places like Detroit, and Gary, and Oakland, sometimes 40%. And those circumstances lead to social problems like recidivism, high crime, high gang and drug activity, poverty. That's what's going on with those six hours. And those disparities cause the same kind of problems in the corporate space. 60% of the money that is spent with Asian suppliers in corporate America, so your Asian professional firms, Asian products you see on the shelves, used to be spent with black-owned businesses. And the same kind of shift has happened between Hispanic businesses and black-owned businesses. That's why when you go into a grocery store, you'll see whole aisles full of products coming from Asian companies, from Hispanic companies. So 
let's go to the grocery store or the drugstore and see where the black oriented products are. You go there, you'll see products like these. You'll see Spoten Wave and Less Jam and Smooth and Shine and Dark and Lovely and Strength of Nature and Dark and Natural and Stay Soft Fro. All those products, products that only black people buy every day, 100% black market. All those products are owned by L'Oreal, the company out of France. All those billions of dollars leave the black community. Some of that money could come back if L'Oreal had supplier diversity, if L'Oreal was doing any business with black-owned firms. L'Oreal only has black buyers, no black suppliers. Same deal with Hennessy. Hennessy, Wall Street Journal estimates between 60 to 80 percent of Hennessy's U.S. market comes from the black community. That means that Hennessy closes down tomorrow without black consumers. Billions and billions of dollars going outside of the community. Hennessy has no black distributors, no black suppliers, does not advertise in black-owned media, or use black-owned advertising agencies. So, bottom line, black, uh, most of the businesses in black areas are not black-owned. Most of the products catering to black culture don't come from black companies. Black unemployment is highest among other, any group in America. Black firms are the highest employer of black people. So I can give you more. Uh, Chicago, 60 KFC franchises, most of them full of black people and black money every day. None of them owned by black franchisees. I'm just trying to give you this picture of the circumstances of economic injustice Dr. King referred to. And what I hope we can Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, to the So What Morning Show. It's Monday. I'm turned up. I had to play that video. Y'all better go look up that TED Talk. I had to play the video. You know why that video is important? She got the numbers. She did the research. It's not just somebody up here preaching to you. She got the numbers. She did the research. Your dollar stays in the community six hours. Why is that video important to today's topic? Oh, God. That video just set up today's topic. We're going to get into today's topic after I tell you about these businesses that you should be supporting. Freedom Paper Company. FreedomPaperCompany.com. It's a black-owned business that produces all types of toiletries, uh, what uh, toilet paper, That's the one I was looking right? For. FreedomPaperCompany.com. Gotta stationary. Stationary. Gotta support those guys. You 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 just gotta. FreedomPaper.com. My homeboys at Power in One Clothing. P-I-O-Clothing.com. If you're a Zo What listener, you go there right now, you type in Zo What Show, all one word. That's your code for 20% off of everything on their website. Power in One Clothing. P-I-O-Clothing.com. Please support those brothers right there. We Juice, man, was going to go out of business. He told me, he was like, man, and the juice thing isn't working. Just, he was going to go out of business. But we need this brother in this community. He's fresh juices, fresh squeezed juices. We got to support this brother. We got to support him. Got to keep him in the business of, of business. And his business and health. All at one strike. We got we to do it. All in one stroke. We got to do that. Black businesses are very important. Listen, you got to get off this book right now. I was able to buy a few more copies, so we have some more copies of the Relationship Dismount. I make the most money off this book when you buy it from my website, imzowilliams.com. Now, you can get it on iTunes. I'm not mad at iTunes or iBooks. Somebody go over there. If you, get, if you got an a iPad or an iPhone, put it on there. Jesus. <laughs> it's an important book, right? And I need this book to help me finance the new one. Right, James? Yeah. The new one is going to be <laughs> ugly, I promise you. Right? Jesus, what's going on with the headphones Got another here? in the works already, though? 
IamZoeWilliams.com. Order this book right now. You buy it today, I mail it out tomorrow. And I've got 17 more copies of my new book, or my older book, my first book. If you buy a copy of this, I'll throw one of these in for the next 17 orders. What? Right? Dr. G! Come on, man. Talking to crazy. Just listen. Best sellers. They're all on Amazon.com. You can order these from Dr. G. He's the homeboy. Get with Dr. G. The Good Wolf. Good friend of mine, Cedric, up in um, up in Sacramento. This is a good guy. This book is incredible, too, dealing with this inner war. You got the good wolf and the bad wolf internally. Which wolf is going to win? Very good book. Go check my homeboy out. Cedric J. Boyd. Please continue to support this brother. Who else we got? I know I see you over there, Kev. Don't worry. I got you, pimp. Did I say any damn thing? No, you didn't say nothing, but I'm saying <laughs> something to remind me. Did you? Can I set you up, Kev? Fall that. easy, breezy. Uh, uh, wow. Continue to support Shepherd's Sweets. A lot of people have been buying this candy, and Kevin and, and damn Tony Kevin B. and damn Tony B <laughs> upset that I didn't bring no damn candy. I ain't bringing candy every week. Candy we, is delicious. We need though. visual aids. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> candy is delicious. Please continue to support that movement. You know, anything I could do to support black businesses is important. Uh, Kevin, tell them where they support you and how they rock with you. Um, well, if they just want to be healthy, if you want to lose some weight, um, if you want to do it pretty quickly, if you want to learn how to box, any of those things, um, you can just try body boxing online. Um, just go to 3bbootcamp.com, and that's the number 3, B as in boy, bootcamp.com, and slash BBB online, and I can get you hooked up. Excellent work. Tony B. Conscious. Everybody loves the nigga shirts. Yes, uh, Lord. You know. Everybody's on the beanies right now. The beanies. I've been rocking them. Oh. Periscoping. I was going to say that. I was going to say, <laughs> you know, you are like the. You know, you like the male Tyra Banks. You throw on something. Okay. <laughs> I say I'm going to whoop his ass. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of analogy? <laughs> just just finish. You a good model. <laughs> so all we got to do is throw something on you with sales. Anyway, www.consciousent.com. <laughs> <laughs> it's Black History Month, the first day. Um, if you order something today, I'm going to give you a free beanie. Okay, just. Go to the site and try to order something today. I'll give you a free beanie. Yes, please continue to support that, brother, as well. A <laughs> um, couple of uh, acknowledgments. You guys remember Ramo Mart, the yeah. Egyptian-style clothing? Yeah. I'm a consultant for his business now. Great. I've Whoa. been coaching Whoa. him, getting him ready to relaunch February 19th. What the He's going to come on here and he's going to apologize to our fans, you know, for, you know, it, it, we, we were so in love with his work and we all supported him so hard and gusto, it revealed the chinks in his business armor. And I've been coaching him through that process and coaching the people who have been supporting him. So the brother is going to relaunch. His business is in order. He has a customer service team now. No. He has a fulfillment center now that's going to package and ship out all of his stuff for him so okay. he can handle the orders because he was overwhelmed. Damn. And when I tell you the new line is so ridiculous. Now, you remember he was in Egypt. Egypt, all of his Egyptian-styled clothing is available. But now he's moved over into Mesopotamia in Phoenicia. ancient Babylon. Oh, the the symbols of kingship. Uh, oh, mm. it's, it's incredible. It's just bananas. So, you know me. I represent all of the cultures we originally started. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I represent them all. So the next show you see me on, I'm going to have the Egyptian, or not, the... Uh, the garb of King Xerxes and Darius on. <laughs> there I go. So Ramo Mart will be coming back. We're going to support that, brother. Listen, I appreciate everybody who supports these black business because you're going to understand after today's show 
why it's important to do so. When we come back, Dr. G and the topic. Because all of my desires are already... You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Hey, what's up? It's Tom Logan of House. You tuned in to T Radio V. All right, serious business. Okay, ready, guys? Serious business. Radio voice, everybody. It's a weekend. Okay, here we go. Let's just play. We should put music on and just dance for a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I have to stop and say one thing. I have to say two words. Hey, 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 hey. We shall join us and the rest of the T-Radio V. Ready? Are we on? Give me some music. Watch this. Ready? Wait, are we rolling? No. Oh, is this real? Like, I was just totally is it kidding. Oh, let's start again. Start again. Say, say that. Okay. Start again. Keep going. Start. I could do real jazz. <laughs> do jazz dance hand. Starting that out. was a shtick. I was doing a shtick. Well, the hair is blonde, it's dye. Yeah, Just because you don't have any hair, and he doesn't have any hair, and I have all this all fake right, start hair. Again, start again, start Fine. Again. How's the hair and the I feel like I'm in a puzzle. <laughs> any show you can have, I can have better. Any show you can have, I can, can have, have better. Best. Are we filming all this? Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> this, this is the good stuff. <laughs> You're short and you know it. I know it was a lot of hodgepodge, but that's good, right? Yeah, hodgepodge is good intro. to cut. Let's do the intro one more time. So Menopause. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Why is a white guy like me co-hosting a black radio show? I think toxic relationships cause you to take poor care of yourself. That if you can recognize danger, if you can pause, if you can uh, take some breaths, refocus and engage, you might be able to dodge a bullet that you're gonna send or coming towards you. One of the things that men don't get is that often women need to vent first to clear their mind. So very soon that intro is going to change, and it's going to change to Dr. G Unplugged. Here's the backstory. <laughs> I just spoke in Miami uh, about mm -hmm. five days ago to a group of about 120 people, and, and I said uh, it was going B, B plus, you know, because I was kind of educating them and I was facilitating something. And then a couple people came up to me during lunch, and they said, uh, I get this issue that I've been dealing with for 10 years, and in 45 seconds, I was able to solve both of them. And I said, can I mention that in the next uh, hour? And so the organizers, I said to them, I want to change the format. Made them kind of nervous because, you know, they had sort of set it up to not be as successful as it might have been. And so I said, let me ask the audience, should we finish facilitating or should we go Q&A? And here's, and here's an answer to one of the questions I got. And 100% of the audience said, let's go Q&A, forget the facilitation. So here's one of the questions. One of the questions was, um, I, I have a talented son. He's an athlete, but he needs a backup plan. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, so how how you tell him about that? Well, I'm telling him he can't depend on that, and he may not succeed. And he says, you know, stop stomping on my dream. Stop killing it. He said, such and such. I said, so what do you do when he says that? I say, well, you know, you need a backup plan. I mean, it's like winning the lottery to... Uh, to really be successful and you can't throw everything away and it's really not going well and i said well the problem with you sir is you don't have skin in the game you have an investment that you don't have skin in the game because you're burying your teeth he's burying his teeth you got to bear your neck mm. and the re and, and so why is it so important to you mm. that he have a backup plan and you know and don't bs me or yourself and he said something i said you're bsing me or yourself and then he suddenly switched and his eyes got a little kind of emotional he says because I'm much more accomplished than I am successful. Ugh. The, guy, the man said, I said, mm. you know, I, uh, uh, mm. I'm talented. I love my talent, but I'm not the best provider. And, uh, and to be honest, I don't want him to be me. 
25 years from now. Yikes. Hmm. And uh, I said, well, you got to tell him that. You got to tell him, you got to bury your neck and say, look, you're talented, I'm talented. But at my age, I'm a little embarrassed that my talent doesn't match my income or revenue. <laughs> Ooh. And I don't want that for you. Yikes. Because there's no amount of, you know, arching your back and saying, you know better and you're talented. That's going to make up for looking in the mirror and say, what is it with you? Mm. And I don't want you, because I love you, I don't want you feeling that pain. And, uh, and so, well, you can see why the audience said, we want more of Dr. G unplugged. So what I want from you, if any of this hits a nerve, send in emails, send in tweets. And uh, let's see if I can help you. And there you have it. And, and, and to segue to today's topic, um, the, and the, today's topic is you know, how poor people of the world's children are being exploited for body parts. Mm. And here's the problem. The, the world has gone transactional. If you haven't looked at the leading Republican candidate, it's all a transaction. Mm. And when it's all a transaction, there's only winners and losers. Wow. And mm. people become things. They become objects. And see, when you bare your teeth in an argument with someone that you love instead of your neck, you're being transactional, and you're both going to lose. Mm. And so what you really need to do is, you know, you, you go honest, you go vulnerable, to someone you love, they'll open up to you. It'll change the world. That's what I'm about. We got to we, we got to stop the transactional blindness in the world, where everybody loses. If that wasn't the truth, I don't know what <laughs> is. Today's topic is right there. The elite's ruthless search for immortality. A deeper look at the black market for organs and it's interesting that it's called the black market because them black organs are being sold like crazy on the black market listen when i tell you this topic is important you first have to understand poor poor is at the beginning of it yeah right third world countries Africa, China, India, but even America, because there are third world countries within America, namely the African-American country that exists inside America. Yep. Right? If you look at some of the infrastructure, 50% of America's prison population is African-American men. Two, nobody sends more people to prison than America. We've got two million inmates plus in America, and 50% of those inmates is black. African American men, right? When you start looking at the, the dropout rate in African American culture, first off, school is now a pipeline to prison. Because based off of your performance in school or lack thereof, they're preparing cots for your ass. We're going to see him <laughs> soon enough. Right? Wow. So you see how the prison, the privatized prison, is connected mm -hmm. to your performance in school. We already know school is not teaching you how to think, think. it's teaching you what to think. Indoctrination, not Indoctrination instead of education. We already know all of this, right? So it's putting you in prime position to be out there turf warring, to be out there gang banging, to be out there drug dealing. Don't anything happen in America. Nothing happens in America unless it is organized. Everything is propaganda. Nothing is just, do do do. I just did this, cuz. <laughs> no. It, it, do you understand? When you look at the CIA coming into, what's my, Libya. A country that was okay, right? It was all right. Soon as Gaddafi stepped over the line and said, "No, fuck the dollar. Let's get some <laughs> gold in here, mm -hmm. and you got to trade with us with gold for the oil." Yep. They say, "Are you trying to destabilize the economy of the world?" Okay, first we're gonna come into your country with ideas. Ideas make the people go, "Hey, we never thought that shit before." Hey, what are you doing about these new ideas? Come and now you got the 
uprising within a country that was quiet. You think that's not happening to you in, in America? You, 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 oh, oh, you thought Sarah Palin was a serious candidate. You think Ben Carson is a serious candidate. You think Donald Trump is a serious candidate, huh? <laughs> you don't see this as a play at all, right? This is why I'm playing this. Sh this is why we're doing this show today to unveil all of the things that are happening right under your nose. There is a black market for organs. Who wants the organs? Who's looking for organs right now? Why are organs in such high demand? Doc, you used to be a doctor. Why are organs in such high demand? Do you know? Well, it's kind of like, look at all this plastic surgery in the world. It's kind of like the organs are, as you, as you say, why not, why not be immortal off of someone's worthless life? What, what, I'd like to, what I'd like to find out is what goes on in the mind of a parent when they give birth to a child or a mother and, and they see that as a meal ticket. They see that as a thing to be sold on the open market. Wow. What yeah. goes on in the mind of that person? Now, I'm assuming that these people are not all evil, uh, you know, and I'm allowing for desperation and desperation, <laughs> uh, you know, calls for desperate things. But what goes on in the mind of a person who would say, let's have as many kids as we can so we can get more money? Hey, why settle for money? We can get more money if we cut them up and, and, and uh, you know, just ship them to the market. What goes on in the head of a, a parent? Wow. Black wow. lungs matter. Black <laughs> liver matter. Black kidneys matter. <laughs> black, black corneas matter. Right? Now, we got my homeboy James <laughs> wow. Martinez in the building. James Martinez is on the forefront. You've seen him on the Zoe What Show yeah. before. He's on the forefront of what's happening information wise and he understands the difference between information and disinformation this is why we brought him onto the show what's going on in the black market regarding organs across the globe well i first time i heard about this was in, in the late 80s early 90s actually because i was uh educating the public on the after effects and programs of MK Ultra, which was the human abuse system of behavior modification for the military for assassination for all sorts of things but human abuse and the trafficking of body parts and humans uh, was going on at that time mm -hmm. and nobody wants to talk about this so I commend you for even addressing this mm -hmm. this is the darkest ugliest thing on earth as far as I'm concerned is that moral bankruptcy of our fellow man against man selling body parts, especially those of children. Uh, and I think everybody was responsible for this. I do know that um, uh, because of technology today, we don't need to do this. We, we have stem cell technology. We have the ability to extend life now. But if you don't have the money and you don't fit the class structure, you're not going to get it, mm. which is horrible in itself. And countries like China, uh, these stories are coming out where vans come around, and uh, if you're dying, uh, those the, the emergency vans won't be there on time because uh, they're going to want your body part because your liver or whatever, your blood type or stuff or something, and it's up for sale, and we, nobody has a problem with it. And in this country, I know that it's a it's a uh, this black market and black issue. This is a total absolute failure on every level with everybody involved black white I don't care where you what your ethnicity is mm -hmm. when that's happening in this country we failed totally and here we are bitching and moaning about getting a gold statue <laughs> right yeah exactly well somebody is <laughs> sniffing and snooping for your <laughs> lungs <laughs> right for your kidneys kidneys are a premium yes right I'm gonna right. tell you right now your yeah. organs are like fresh produce, but only they last, what? they don't last as long. 70% of their, their organs on the black market are, they said were kidneys. Do you understand that? This is a real situation. Y'all out here bullshitting in the streets trying to get some Jordans and killing each other for them. Okay, so, so he, here's how we need to get traction for it because the world has been reduced to sensationalism. Michael Moore, Michael Moore does those movies. Here's your next movie. It's going to be called Chop Shop. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you talk about the body parts market. Mm. That's wow. a winner. Michael Moore, if you're listening, or someone else, <laughs> send this to him. Chop Listen, shop. 
when we come back, a good documentary. when we come back, our special guest, the mother of slain young brother Kendrick Johnson, will be on the phone to talk about her son and what happened to him. She's going to update us. We'll be back at 2.2. The Zoe What Morning Show is on flames. We'll be back with more information. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Hey, what's up? It's Tone Logan in the house, and you're tuned into T Radio V. I'm Laura Somoza. I'm Sterling Gardner. And we are Between the Sheets every Monday here, 3 p.m., tradiov.com. T Radio V. That's right. It's T Radio V, Radio in TV. <laughs> what is that face? <laughs> she wants to see our hands. That's Radio in T V. Wah, 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 wah. We're not a couple. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ty Simpkins. Miss Danielle Basuti. Hi, this is Brooke Peoples. I'm Jocelyn Donahue. Hi, I'm Keegan Allen, and you're watching T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. T Radio V. Yo. <laughs> T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Radio V. What did you play opposite Andy and Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I played, I played a news anchor, and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is is that play my sister? You played his wife, Denise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So what's wrong with that, Eliza? Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's got it's a great just, range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. In 2005, when Representative Cynthia McKinney grilled Donald Rumsfeld, during the House hearings on the 2006 budget for the U.S. Department of Defense. Let's listen to McKinney as she questions Rumsfeld on the... Do expect the written response to my previous question, hopefully by the end of the week. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Representative. First, the answer to your first question is, is no, absolutely not. The policy of the United States government is... Uh, clear, unambiguous, and opposed to uh, to the activities that you described. The um, second question. Well, how do you explain the fact that um, DynCorp and its successor uh, companies have received and continue to receive government contracts? I would have to go and and find the facts, but there are laws and rules and regulations with respect to government contracts, and there are times that corporations do things they should not do, in which case they tend to be suspended for some period. There are times then that, that the, under the laws and the rules and regulations for the, that uh, passed by the Congress and implemented by the executive branch, that corporations can get off of the pen, out of the penalty box, if you will, and, and be permitted to engage in contracts with the government. They're, they're not generally not barred in perpetuity. This contract, this company um, was never in the penalty box. If you could proceed to my second question, please. The, um, the second question, uh, I've forgotten what the second question was. I think Ms. Jonas knows it. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. McKinney. I appreciate the question. I appreciate your interest in uh, our department's financial uh, condition, and uh, we are working very hard on that program. I've just come back uh, recently. This I understand that you're working hard on it, but my question was, who has the contract? How long has that, have they had that contract? Let me tell you why that's such an important video. They skipped past her first couple questions. 
But you see the, the, yeah. the circular, what they call circumlocution, talking in circles? Thank you very much for the great questions. And, you know, we're working <laughs> yeah. really hard. Uh, motherfucker, I didn't ask none of that. <laughs> Could you shit. answer the goddamn question? I asked you this. Whenever they wrong about some shit, they send you through that. Yep. Circle the wagon. But when you wrong, these motherfuckers is at your front door like, okay, <laughs> what's happening? Where my shit right now? I'm cutting your shit off, right? I just wanted to show that because that is the process that pushes people away from even wanting to engage with them. I'm not gonna get no answers talking to them. That lady was asking direct questions. Uh, I forgot the question. Uh, okay, could your assistant, an you know the second question, right? She was asking about missing body parts. <laughs> that's what she, no, that was no, no, no. She was asking about 9-11. And she, no, I saw that. I saw that yesterday too. She said she asked a question about the corporations and some missing bodies, and then they started. That's what one some of the practices that she look was, at that, that Donald Rumsfeld was talking about. We don't that they don't engage in. Start talking in a circle, mm -hmm. right? And she asked about those bodies. Wordsmithing. <laughs> Wordsmithing, yeah. right? So they you ran know? down during 9-11 and was having a field day, huh? Oh, body parts. Let's go get them. <laughs> You know, what, something that would turn a lot of these politicians <laughs> naked, which they need to be, is uh, if, if you ask them instead of, what do you know, if you ask them, what do you understand? Mm. Because, because I think if you asked any of the candidates, I actually threw this out there, if you, if you want to trump Trump, uh, what you do is you let them talk, and, <laughs> and, and you say, you seem passionate about this, uh, and I'm not against it, but can you tell me and the viewers how how you came to believe what you believe, what you took into consideration, what were the other alternatives, uh, who are the people that it will all affect, and if you can answer all those things, I might actually get behind you, and uh, Trump, he, he'd be dead in the water because he doesn't have a deep understanding when he can just rile people up transactionally. Mm -hmm. he, he's going to do a bait and ditch. He's going to wow. he, he's going to fire people up and then he's going to say you're all fired because what people <laughs> say is uh, uh, I want you know what the media says is people want to be him or have what he has well when he says well if you want to be me and have what I have these are all the things you're going to need to do to succeed and be there you're going to all have to get STEM education. You're all going to have to be technologically and financially educated. You're going to have to let yourself fail a hundred times to succeed once. And wow. if you start feeling sorry for yourself, you're fired. And a lot of, uh, you know, if he said that to his voter base, they'd say, but, but you're so strong. We thought you'd take care of us. And what he'd say is, I don't take care of anyone. <laughs> I'm fucking selfish. Exactly. Listen, it's crazy. crazy. Listen, crazy. we have the sister on the line right now. I want to get her in here. Her name is Jackie. She is the mother of this brother. His name, Kendrick Johnson. The brother's body was found rolled rolled up in a wrestling match in a wrestling mat in a gymnasium of his high school I in Valdosta, in Valdosta, Georgia, where he was a student. Uh, a preliminary investigation and autopsy concluded that the death was accidental. Now, they didn't came with all types of wild shit mm -hmm. on this one. He rolled himself up yeah. in the mat. He was trying to get his shoe while he was in the mat. And he, yeah, and he suffocated. What? In a mat? Yeah, just come on. It's, <laughs> it's been all types of chicanery around this case. Now, for me... And anybody who lives in Georgia already knows that Georgia has its own Bureau of Investigation. Everybody else got the FBI. Georgia's got the <laughs> GBI, too. Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Now, they took over. And then between them and the funeral home, they don't know what happened to the boy's organs. Mm -hmm. Wait, and when they pulled him up, when they exhumed him, I heard, because mm -hmm. I don't know anything firsthand. When they exhumed him, I heard his body was stuffed with newspapers. Yeah. What? Yes. Man. Now, what practice goes down like that? Sister Jackie, welcome to the Zo What Morning Show. Is she on? Jackie, I'm here. how you doing, sister? Here. All right. I'm let me here. just let me just say thank you for your courage. 
Thank you for your strength to even talk about this. Yes. Yeah. Right? Because this is a tough conversation to have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So my question is, where does the case stand right now and, and what's happening? Well, right now we're, um, we've been in um, depositions and with the Department of Justice is still working on the case. So we're kind of like at maybe a, I say a standstill, but our attorneys are still working and um, the Department of Justice are reassured us that they're still working. Wow. So did you or did you not have the same lawyers as Trayvon Martin and are they still on the case or no? Um, I did have um, Ben Kwong and I, I have also have another attorney as Shabeen King, but Ben Kwong is no longer um, with us. They didn't want him to work because he didn't have a Georgia bar and he's out of um, Tallahassee, Florida. So. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. When you found out that your son's organs were gone, what was the first thought that crossed your mind? Did you think, is this normal practice? Or when you found out about that, who did you go talk to? Who did you confront? Because I know you was pissed. Um, me, I was like at a blunt, just quiet, couldn't say nothing. And you know, but my husband, he went straight to the funeral home director. And what did he and say? I just thought and just couldn't believe. Um, he told him a couple of different things that maybe one or two organs were missing. He never came out and told him that every organ was missing. And he never gave a reason why those two organs, one or two that he claimed were missing, were missing. <laughs> but he found out every internal organ from his brain down to his pelvis, and then to find out the horror that they stuffed the boy's body with newspaper that's not even industry standard why would what yes. who, how did they explain that well so far they haven't they came back with uh, something from the uh, funeral home board saying it wasn't normal practice but it wasn't illegal because it wasn't standing there but it was to, uh, to my family it was like a slap in the face because you treated my baby like he was a garbage can mm. 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 horrible mm. now have you done any independent research on this growing argument or this growing discussion about organ harvesting have you done any research yourself and if you have, what have you found out? I have not actually really researched it, but I have been informed that this is ha happening. They are taking our black boys' babies' organs and um, selling them for uh, black market prices. Wow. This is, man, this is, listen, the sister has a rally going on i want everybody within the sound of my voice if you support your folks if you support this show if you support what we do on a weekly basis and you're within proximity of this sister and her rally y'all got to show up now jackie tell us exactly when and where this rally will happen it's going to be in Decatur, Georgia. That's on the outskirts of Atlanta. And it will be at Straight Lives Church of God from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And it's a um, prayer and reflection and voters registration rally to get people to come out and vote. And it's for families that haven't got justice and want to know that their child still matters. Just like KJ haven't got justice. It's been three years. We don't want them to give up, to keep fighting. We want to let them know to keep fighting, that their fight is not in vain. Wow. What day is it? Did you, did you say the day? Say the date again, please. It's February the 27th. February 27th in Decatur, Georgia. What time? What time? One more time. 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. 3 to 5 p.m. 
And what's the location one more time? Straight Live, Touch of God, and Christ. There you go. Jackie, do you have a link you can send us? Because some of us have this, you know, we're connected to social media, and we'll get the word out. Is there a link about this uh, uh, this it, event? It is. It is, and I can send it to you. Yeah, please I send, have an, it, it, send it to Zoe, and he'll get it to, out to all of us. Yeah, yeah. You can send it to me. Once I get the link, I will tweet it out to everyone, and then you guys got to go support this. Let me ask you a question. Right. I, I, I also heard that the DA stepped down off this case. Do you have any idea oh, yeah, of right. why the DA would step down? I just, I, it wasn't the DA, it was the Department of Justice. Um, the I DOJ stepped, stepped down? down? Yeah. Somebody knows wow. something. Yep. Wow. Where, where, I'm, I, wow. I'm Jackie, my name is uh, James. I, I'm first, first, first and foremost, I want to send my uh, regards and heart out to you for what you've been through, but um, what are the leads? Who has leads on what's going on? Because um, I've heard about these stories before, but what are the leads in terms of getting answers to who's responsible? Because this takes organization. To be able to do something like this, you can't just come in and have it done in half an hour. There's blood. It takes skilled cutting. It takes a certain amount of time and organization to do it. Do you, do you know uh, in terms of uh, thus far what you've been told? It, it, are there any leads at all or just nothing? Well, they do actually have leads. They have um, some guys that are um, received target letters for the investigation, but that's as far as it's, it has went. Nobody has been arrested or anything. So, What? Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, and, and you know what? You see how America is. America is on a conveyor belt. Reality. Just keep going. Keep pushing. <laughs> Forget about all this bullshit that happened right. to you. Just one day at a time. Yeah. Keep moving forward. When something this heinous, how right. do you move forward? Something this egregious with no answers? And they blasted this on CNN. Too. They did major stories on it. and still. Nothing. Come on, man. Yeah, Somebody knows something. It's a big cover-up. It's a total lie. And you need to hire people outside privately to investigate that because you're not going to get any answers because somebody knows something. That's what the DOJ pulled back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? Uh, whatever happened to Al Sharpton? Wasn't he in contact with you in the beginning? What happened to him? In the beginning, and I, I can't say that I, I know I don't begin to understand. I mean, we don't been on his show like a couple of times, but he came here to that also actually one time. But after that, it just never really heard no more from him. So it was like a photo op. It was an yep. appearance. Yeah. Yep. Tactical. Wow. That's his M.O. Was there any contract with you from the coroner's lab stating any kind of foul play? Because sometimes, you know, we made a mistake here or we did this here and they bring it to your attention. Did they bring anything to your attention? Foul play. The coroner is in Hmm? The coroner is the one who actually told us that um, something was wrong, and he didn't want to get swindled in that. Um, he the one told us that our son um, wasn't. Um, our son was murdered. He the one actually told us, and he said he didn't want to take no fall for this mess that they were feeling. But he was saying all kind of other words because he said KJ body was in a mat that was 14 inch wide but kj body was 17 to 19 his shoulders were 17 to 19 inches wide so there was no way he could have fit in that little hole that kj was in so he actually had we we already knew that kj had to be rolled up in that hole wow. in that mat wow listen sister uh i'm not gonna ask no more questions i just want to say shit that's what I want to say. I want to say shit, but I also want to say thank you, right? Shit for me and thank you to you because I'm pissed off. I already Listen, how many of you guys have lost a friend? How many of you guys lost a friend? Somebody got murdered. How many of you guys lost somebody? I know I have because I'm from the hood. So I done lost folk, and I know how I feel to not have no answers about why. But I can't imagine how it feels to lose your son. 
to lose a family member. That's a whole d another feeling. So let me just say, I appreciate you. I respect you for coming on. I admire your strength. Thank you so much for sharing this information. And as soon as you get me the link, I will push it out there. Okay? Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, you Jackie. Take God bless you. There. Don't yeah. give up, Jackie. Keep going. Keep Find out who did this. Listen, we're going to take right, a quick you. break. When we come back, we're going to finish this topic because this is some bullshit and it's happening. And our job is to raise awareness so you can stop running around this motherfucker looking forward to Valentine's Day. <laughs> or, or, or getting in shape for summer. Or shit, you know, uh, hey Christmas now. is coming. <laughs> All the dumb shit they got you distracted Hold up, with. Man. Hold up. We're going to holler at you in a minute. I'll be attacking getting in shape. <laughs> you are watching T Radio V Radio in TV. Grant, I'm Grant Reynolds. Grant Reynolds. Oh. I don't know what to do with my hands. I mean, this is pretty much just like the same thing. Oh, wait, this is. No one wants to see her ninny goats. He's like a bear. He's like a big bear, yeah. is he? Like, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, we'll start. If you don't like the right pizza, go f yourself. <laughs> you never know who should have shot Shin Chai Chai. Absolutely, I think that my story. show is better than yours. Yes, it is. No, it's, no, it's not. not. Yes, it is. No, no it's, it's not. Yes, it is. The only thing that masks alcohol while you're driving is peanuts. Peanuts? Peanuts? Have lots of <laughs> when you're drinking. It wouldn't be the first time Langan had Skippy in his mouth. Is that your dog? T-Radio, me! <laughs> Get in the car. Waka, waka, waka. Throw another log in the fire. It's not hot enough back here. T-Radio, V, Radio and TV. Ay, ay, ay! T-Radio, V. And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically naughty. naughty. I'm never politically correct. I'm Dr. Dr. Drew, Drew hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so hey guys, how are you? It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wished she could live at rehab. <laughs> but only if Dr. Drew's there. Be in 2005, when representing... And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically naughty. naughty. I'm never politically correct. Dr. Dr. Drew, Drew <laughs> hi. Oh, I'm so hey guys, It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wished she could live at rehab. <laughs> but only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. but someone like, you know, is a little too groping might be inappropriate. But I like the flirting. Well, when I, when I, I walked in, know. you shoved my head in your no! Are you going to sue me? <laughs> Get Politically Naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. on T-Radio V. Hey, what's up? It's Tone Logan in the house, and you're tuned into T-Radio V. Yo, what's up? What's up? This is Too Short, and you're watching T-Radio V. You are watching T-Radio V. Radio in TV. In 2005, they tend to be suspended. Body parts. They've been selling body parts. This is that's old. That's not new. That's why black people don't like to go to hospitals. They go to get their toes clipped, their fingernails clipped, and they wake up and their foot's gone. They've been utilizing the organs of black people for years. The organs and the, the body parts and the members of African American people. And that goes back to George Washington. There's a longtime myth that George Washington had wooden teeth. 
We've, we've heard that myth growing up in school. The reality is George Washington did not have wooden teeth because common sense will tell you you can't put wood in your mouth, it gets wet and wet wood is useless. What George Washington did, he had the teeth of his African slaves yanked out of their mouths and he made dentures out of these teeth. And they're on display, his dentures are on display at museums right now. And that just goes to show the history of African people having our bodies mutilated and our members disfigured and mutilated for the betterment and benefit of the dominant society. In America, at least, at least 2,500 black people go missing every year at least never to be found again not killed enough you just don't find them again why doesn't that number ever go down how can you constantly have the same amount of people are you trying to say the same killers go out and murder the same amount of people every year no somebody is taking black people off the street there's been stories on this kidnapped by the government kidnapped by organ traffickers drive-by shooting is organ stealing i'm worth 50 million dollars and i need a kidney you know, kidneys are pretty sensitive. You got to find somebody who really got the kidney that matches yours. You think I'm going to wait till somebody die for me to get one? If I don't get one soon, I'm going to die. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pay somebody to go research people. Okay, let's go look at all the black organ donors. Let's look at all the black people who got organ donor on their driver's license, which is why I'm not a friend of that. I say, if you want to donate your organs, put it in your will. Say that if I die, this can go to my family, my relatives, my friends, or whomever. But when you put it on your license, I believe you make yourself a public target. And so what do they find? We got a guy in Los Angeles. He has the same blood type as you, same kidney type as you likely. He ain't he healthy though. He ain't likely to die no time soon. He don't know you, so he ain't gonna give you no organ for free. So guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna arrange a murder that makes it look like he was in a car accident. We're gonna arrange a murder that make it look like he committed suicide. So the next thing you know, you coming out the gas station, boom, you get hit by a Mack truck. You dead, gone. You get taken to the funeral home. Your family come to the funeral. They don't know that before your body got laid to rest. A little hole was poked and they poured your kidney out. A lot of people don't know when you get arrested or even when you get convicted, a lot of times law enforcement or police will swab your mouth for DNA. And now they have your DNA record on file. They have your genetic information on file. And you have to understand with law enforcement, a lot of times they'll sell your information to tabloids and like especially celebrities, they sell their information to tabloids and magazines and news outlets all the time. So it's not a stretch to believe that they won't use your DNA or your genetic information for nefarious reasons. You, my son, cops come by and inform me you've just been shot dead. You don't have jurisdiction over that body. Hmm? That's the coroner. You can't get that body until the coroner release you. So we get released, we go around and pick it up, and I see all these cuts and these stitches. I just thought they was doing a retune investigation, following the family, they took your organs. Hmm? I'm under all this stress, my son is dead. Now you buried now, I can't dig you up because the court got to have permission. Most of those cases is organ stealing. It's been known for a long time, even back in slavery times, that black organs were considered superior genetically to other folks' organs. For example, whenever there's a transplant, okay, especially when rich folks get heart transplant, liver transplant, kidney transplant, they like white, they like black organs. We had a famous case in Pennsylvania, Governor Casey was one of the most racist governors who ever lived back in the 19, late 80s, early 90s. He had a heart transplant. Guess who heart they gave him? A black person's heart. Down in Georgia, there was a case of an African-American 17-year-old kid who was found mysteriously dead at school. He died in the gym. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> See, I, listen. There are a lot of people who want to be politically correct about these kind of conversations. See, our media don't come straight up the street, as Jeff Brown would say. Jeff Brown would say, hey, don't beat around the bush, brother. You, you need something, come straight up the street. It, it, just be direct. Come straight up the street. They don't come straight up the street. No. See, when no. you're dealing with, like, Fox News, Fox News is creating content. They're not reporting it. And I would say all of them. 90%, 95% of all <laughs> media outlets mm -hmm. in America right. is creating content. I, I done told you, the political thing is a farce, right? It's, it's a play. It's a staged performance. And we think we're part participants in it in the sense that 
We're choosing. First off, if you didn't create the choices, yes. you're not choosing. See, people don't understand that. If I have control over what you choose, then I am the one who's actually choosing for you. And you think you're choosing, but guess what? If I control your thought process, what you believe, what you, your, your social narrative, or what they call social game rules, not only do I give you the value system to make the choice, I also produce the choices. You're not choosing shit. That's right. You're not choosing anything. Lord. <laughs> That's the matrix. So you come in with, I'm black Baptist, born in the Southeast, <laughs> educated over here. All these narratives have already been constructed for you to yeah. plug into right. ideologically. Well, I'm 27 now. I'm, I, me and my girl been going steady for a little while. I guess it's time to get married. The social construct, right? Dan, does any of this, I don't know. James, I know. does any of this make sense? Because yeah. sometimes I get frustrated because I'm like, I, I think I said it once before because this shit hurts my heart because this sister ain't got no answers. Oh, it's horrible. I would just say if she's listening to this, what I would do and suggest to her is she contact a guy named Joe McMonagle because there is information I could sense that she's not being told about. Mm -hmm. And that's an unusual way to get information. Joe McMonagle is probably one of the top remote viewers in the world. He finds lost children. Okay, slow people. down. Because our people need to hear what you just said. Can we find a link to him? Uh, remote yes. viewing. Yes. And let's just go deep real quick, real quick. Just a quick uh, remote viewing was developed by SRI International. Uh, it's used by the intelligence community to get information on everything from weapons, gold, missing children, uh, hostages, things in the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. But it's excellent for locating uh, crime. It's used for crime. Right. Uh, Joe McMonagle is was one of the people uh, with the initial startup team that started this for the military, for the Army. Right. And he's been tested all over the world. He does pro bono stuff. Right. Uh, if this happened to me, I would never use the standard system for investigation. I would use Joe McMonagle. Call him up, email him. He has a website. I believe it's McMonagle.com, but don't quote me on that. Look on it in Google. And then tell him that he, he was referred to on a radio show and see if he'll uh, use his skills to locate. Because I could tell. There's more. There, nobody's going to tell her anything. No. Sorry. No. I, I, I don't mean to be negative. They're not. But somebody uh, needs to um, open that can of worms. First off, she doesn't have any leverage. Right. Exactly. Right. She's by herself. Yeah. Her family's by herself. She has no yeah. Listen, if this is a Jewish family, they're not by themselves. The right. Jewish community, the money, the backing, the infrastructure. Oh, they'd have help See, in two this, seconds. Right. This is the this is the reason why I played that video at the very top of the show. It goes back to the classes thing though. You, you we don't have mm -hmm. any political clout. We spend a hundred one point seven trillion dollars a year. But it's disconnected money. It's consumerism money. Right. It's not. Exactly. It's not organized. A, it's not an organized block of people. Right. Where you got to say, oh shit, the rich, wealthy blacks. It's not that. No, and even with the rich, wealthy blacks, they're still disconnected. It's always they're disconnected right. from the poor blacks. So it's like, oh, the poor blacks. Who are they? <laughs> uh. I'm over here with the, with the Sorensons of, of Cambridge. I don't fuck with niggas from Compton. So do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's classism in the black community that keeps our collective power broken down. Yep. See, yes, this is class. why they can ignore this system because she doesn't have, how many black people are in America today right now? I have no idea. 50, <laughs> 40, 50 million? Yeah. 40, 50 million? 50, 40 to 60 million? Imagine if it was a block of 60 million black people saying, fuck happened to Kendrick. Yeah. What y'all do with Kendrick's body parts? Mm -hmm. And on a collective move, like, this is why someone like LeBron James can come out and say, man, the Tamar case is too big for me. That's, I, I can't really do anything to help that. Wait, wait a minute. You from Cleveland, and you can't help him by at least standing up and saying, guess what? We're going to boycott 
the next week of hoop. You're big enough. Le- LeBron is big enough to do that. What, did he come out and say something? Is he really big enough to do that? that? Guess what? Yeah. Here, but he here's my He's point. Really big if Ali that. was big enough to do it, LeBron is big enough to do it. At least Ali was man enough to say, guess what? Fuck it. I'm going to jail. Yeah. Right. Yeah, good point. That's, so yes. my point is if he was LeBron. Do that, but yeah. my point is that, that's what he got to yeah. do. You got to put yourself in harm's way. Hey. Yeah. So Life my point is. Life in your comfort zone. Life yes. Not in your comfort so zone. my point is. Fuck the Cavaliers for a week. Yeah. <laughs> and LeBron's big enough to go to CP3, to go to all these other players and go, look, y'all, this is what I'm going to do. Now, y'all, y'all ain't got to do it, but I'm asking y'all to do it. It's a great idea, actually, because all the advertisers that pay for all that TV yeah, spot exactly. and everything, if they don't have these guys, they don't have the advertisers, and the drug cartels aren't going to make their money, and all the big top peewee and all the crap that they put on the all advertisements, that, right. the you should come out and just tell all the other players – to come out and do this and watch how how, how fast right. everybody will wake up from this. You know, the, uh, cash. Uh, um, I think her name is, uh, I interviewed her, but I don't know that I can get a response. Michelle Roberts is the head of the NBA Players Association. LeBron and CP3 are the president and vice president. Exactly. Yeah. That's, why I, that's why I named them two dudes. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think there's a way to sort of do that. The problem is you got to get, these people have to care enough to inconvenience themselves. People Ooh, don't. People do not exactly. care enough Ooh. to. Exactly. It's not even harm's way. It's inconvenient. So people do Ooh. what they care about. They don't. People don't do what's important. They do what they care enough about, and they don't care enough about it. Uh, look, I'm white, so uh, so you have more of an investment in helping your people. I mean, LeBron, CP, you should be ashamed of yourself. Wow, Kev. No, I I absolutely agree with him, but you understand they're they're under those slave contracts. So, you know, when you when you step out of bounds of those contracts and you say, well, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, then all of the rest of that heat comes down. They lose everything. Well, if, yeah. Well, well, it's worth it. Though. Yeah. So but, I'm, and, I'm, yes, but, I, but this I'm is saying, the beautiful part about that. When Ali left, lost everything, it galvanized black athletes to say, nah, homie, we ain't going to let you fall. Right. Even his arch rival, Frazier. Take this bread, homie. Right. United people. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Jim Brown, Bill Russell. Everybody's like, nah, we ain't going to let this happen. And guess what? Because that happened for Ali, there was a, there was a point in time Ali was more famous than Jesus Christ. You're right. Am I bullshitting? <laughs> Ali is the icon he is today because he did that. He said. It was bigger than boxing. A different time, though. No, you talking about no, well, it, so, no but Twitter, I'm saying, no social. The no, time is now. I agree. What time? But you're the talking time? about when you when you're trying to tell them to take that mantle. You're talking about a completely different time and a different monster that they have to take on when they do that type of shit. Now I agree they should do it, but you understand that they're the reins that they have on them are completely different than what Muhammad But you Ali get to say. On. Fuck them reigns. Sometimes you and guess what happens. And guess what happens? The fallout. See, this is one thing about America. America is a classy brute. Right? It is a classy <laughs> animal. It is a classy barbarian. It does not want to be embarrassed in the eyes of the world. It always wants to look neutral and as as Kal-El, the good guy. <laughs> right. Right? But you don't want to embarrass America. And when America's shit is out for everybody to see like that, then it's like, oh, damn. That's what happened with Ali. Well, um, Ali was already political, though. I mean, but LeBron is not have... really political. You, yeah, you're trying to act, change this dude over, you know what I'm saying, in midair. Hey, hey guess what? Had a track record but of but doing we that. didn't even have social media then. Now, they could have done stuff to Ali back then and got away with it that they can't do now. Cause we got enough social media eyes on the no world question. that if they do it, there it is. We got to take this break. It's getting crazy in here, damn it. <laughs> hey, LeBron, holla at me, cuz. <laughs> we got to do this, pimp. <laughs> <laughs> You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. T Radio V. 
What did you play opposite Andy, Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I played, I played a news anchor and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is, is that who played my sister? You played his wife, Denise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So you what's wrong with that, Eliza? Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's got it's a great just, range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. Hey, I'm Dean Kane, and you are watching T Radio V. I'm watching it, too. Right now. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Andy D on T Radio V. Bing bang bing boom right. Yeah. Andy D on T Radio V. Bobbity bibbity bobbity boo. Andy D on T Radio V. The Andy Dick Show Wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on T Radio V. Wow. So but Paul, we'll do it. We're, we'll do it better when we when the show actually starts. Yeah, no. Hey, hello, hello. This is David Faustino, and you are watching T Radio V. Do you see what I'm saying? It's television crossed with radio. It's all together. It's weird. Radio's in the middle of it. I, it's amazing. You're watching it. Go. Love and marriage. Love and marriage. Hey, my fellow thoughters out there. I'm Charles Shaughnessy. Check out my new show, Here's a Thought, with Charles Shaughnessy, August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. Now, you know I have a lot to say, but I want to hear what you have to say. So tune in, grab your phones, call me, tweet me, email me in the studio, and let's get this conversation going. Here's a Thought, starting August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. That's radio in TV. watching T Radio V Radio in TV abortion provider in the nation and uh, you're paying for it so in any event Margaret Sanger was the founder of Planned Parenthood and uh, go back and read her writing she wrote a monograph that I read called breeding the thoroughbred and what Margaret Sanger believed was there were defective genetically defective people they were Roman Catholics they were evangelical Protestants they were Southern Europeans, they were Latinos, and especially they were African Americans. And what she advocated was find a leader among the black community that is highly respected, let him be our spokesperson and lead the black people toward euthanasia. That was the game. I mean, it's, it was, it's all spelled out, it's all written out. I don't know why people don't read that stuff, because she said it, that's what she wanted to do. The, the Nazis, on the other hand, had a term, useless eaters. They, they found people that they thought were defective, and they wanted to sterilize them, and of course, ultimately murder them. Uh, we can't have a concept of people who can be destroyed by the government. It's not good, and uh, yet, we have that this country and the big money the big money the rockefeller foundation and others went to support planned parenthood why because the big but people did not want to have a welfare rolls cluttered with black babies that they had to pay for he was drafted and then he refused induction on the grounds of his religious convictions on war my conscience won't let me go shoot my brother or uh, some darker people or uh, some poor hungry people in the mud for big powerful America and shoot them for what? They never call me nigger. They never lynch me. They never put no dogs on me. They never rob me of my nationality. 
for the rape and kill my mother and father. What well, I'm going to shoot them for what? How can I go shoot them? Them little poor little black people, little babies and children and women. How can I shoot them poor people? I'm just taking no, me to jail. Youngster, uh, Ken Kendrick, uh, Johnson, 17 year old black child, found dead in the high school gym and stuck between some some athletic equipment. Then we find out that all his organs is gone, okay? The sheriff and all the folks down there, the natural causes. Now you got an undertaker and, and call you, I know you're not being back, but you need to check this out. The undertaker, this happened in, in, in Georgia, now that's the Georgia. The undertaker that was brought in to deal with the body is the same undertaker from Miami that was used to deal with Trayvon Martin. Now, you're going to tell me as close as Atlanta is with Black Undertaker, you're going to call all the way to Florida and have a Black Undertaker come up, and then they exhumed the body, because people was asking serious questions, and found out his body was stuffed with newspaper. Uh, the, 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 the Black Undertaker from Miami didn't know that. And he must be part of it, okay? Now, now he's the same one that did Trayvon, right? The same one that did Trayvon. And I've always suspected something was wrong with Trayvon because it's not been for you and black radio. We would have never heard of him because he laid in the mark as a John Doe, okay? Case would have been closed. And so now what we're looking at now, the body's been exhumed. And we find out that all his organs was gone. I've been trying to tell y'all that, and I keep telling you, you don't hear it, that the drive-by shootings, most of them, is by the organ stealing, okay? We go back to, to and it's been reported, but ain't nobody, ain't nobody listening because it seems so awesome. But if you Google a New York Times story, July the 24th, 2009, 44 charged by U.S. In, in Jersey corruption sweep, and they're talking about stealing organs, stealing organs, stealing organs. And so consequently, what the, the biggest money maker on the planet right now is organs. All these, all these drive-by. But look, if I'm so thuggish, I'm just gonna go and shoot people in the black community. What difference does it make a woman or a man? Listen. Nothing pisses me off more than a conformist. Why? It goes back to Krishnamurti. I'm going to keep saying this shit until you wake up in the morning with this shit just ringing around in you. It is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a sick society. J. Krishnamurti. You know how many people out there aspire and dream to have the American dream the house the 2.5 kids the puppy the picket fence do you know how everybody out here what was the name of that character in the matrix who wanted to get plugged back in what was his name cypher cypher everybody wants to be cypher yep. everybody is born <laughs> cypher everybody wants to get plugged back into the matrix the first thing I know this steak ain't real but damn. <laughs> but damn, ignorance is bliss. Make yeah. me somebody important. <laughs> you know, you know, I, you know, I, I just had a thought because uh, uh, I remember a few, maybe a couple months ago, you know, you kind of ranted so about, uh, you know, that our listeners and viewers, you got to do something. You can't just sort of passively be entered. This is more than entertainment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was thinking how Trump fans the flames of angry people. Uh, I think. A lot, I, I think what we do is we question everything, and I think a lot of our listeners and viewers live vicariously through us with our questions, and they don't do anything with it. Ooh, Ooh. damn. Ooh. Call these motherfuckers out, Doc. I ain't <laughs> call them no, out, no, Doc. No, I'm no, going to no, turn no, my no, back no, no, on no, it. No, but, you know, because what we do on the show is we, we question we question anything and everything that just seems like too much of a pat answer that hurt, hurts people, and I think people live vicariously. Yeah, you go... You, yeah, so you go question everyone. Oh, that's a good answer. But, you know, if, if people aren't doing anything with it, then, you know, I'm, 
I don't know. Then it's we, just, got, we got to rethink then it's this. just content. Right. I mean, we, you know. This yeah. is why I agree with you. This is why I agree with Kev about LeBron. You can't be mad at LeBron because he's not going to put himself out there by himself. By himself. Now LeBron has a legitimate, I'm not finna, you're not finna Jesus me. <laughs> Do you remember? Mm -hmm. The Jews was like, we don't know that nigga. <laughs> Pontius Pilate was like, look, what y'all tell me what to do with him, because it ain't really a big deal to me. The Jews was like, kill him. We, hey, oh, I thought he was for y'all. We, we ain't got shit to do with. We, so in in LeBron's yeah. defense, give him a powerful organization. He may, he, he may, might, he if might he if he up. knew his people mm -hmm. was gonna be there, he okay, might hook yeah. it up. He, he might hook it up. Yeah. Muhammad Ali had the nation of Islam, so he was like, shit. LeBron got the nation of thoughts. <laughs> right. The nation of ratchets. Thoughts. <laughs> the nation of niggas who trying to be like him. The nation of niggas trying to take his spot. Man, body parts stealing, though. If you go back, like, even in Roman times, there was a show that was on TV called Rome a few years ago, and um, they showed how um, from war, like when they would war with Africa, they would, they would cut off body parts. So this one guy, he came back home and he showed his wife. He had a bag and he threw it on the table, and a black and African penis fell out on the table. What? That he stole. Yeah, he had took from this African when he was over there fighting him. He said, um, "Everyone takes these because they said they were uh, magic. They're supposed to be magic." So that that goes back to that time. And even in uh, ancient Egypt, um, when they started, when they raided Egypt, they would take the mummies' bodies and grind them up. And, and uh, right? huh? Sniff them, right? Well, they would sniff them. They would. They had them. Uh, you can find some in like Worcestershire bottles. They would. It was use it like a condiment, like pepper and shit, and pour it over their food. Really? They would put some of it in um, in makeup, so it make them darker. So it was all that mm. type of shit. They've been doing that shit forever. Crazy. Mm. So that's where they got the cutting speaking off to Mike penis? Pimp. Yes. That's where they got the cutting off our penises when they hung us. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> I don't know that's where so, they got it from, but they've been doing it way since so Roman times back is, then. If they were they taking our body parts back then when they were hanging us on trees? They already said it. It's, they, it's not they new. Like, would they like? They already said it's not new. Right. Because you never hear about that in all of the lynchings and everything they talk about well, the lynchings. Well, if you talk but about they the never talk about if they went back after you know. After the lynching was over, well, but technology doesn't that? need that anymore. Yeah. We don't need it anymore. We, we people, if they want to customize and they're concerned about their DNA, RNA, and the efficiency of how long they're going to live, today with the technology and stem cell research, you can early on as a child, uh, like some people after childbirth, they'll save the placenta. Yeah. Or they'll save the umbilical cord. Yeah. For certain reasons, right. health reasons. Now today, with the 3D printing of organs, stem cell technology, within a short amount of time. You'll be able to regrow your organs anyway. <laughs> wow. That's already happening now anyway. So a lot of these airheads that are doing this to everybody. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna go, if you need an extra liver or whatever, grow your own. It's custom made for you because it's gonna be yours, <laughs> right. and your body won't reject yeah, it because correct. it's yours. Exactly. Because all the stuff that they're not saying about this is when it, I'm sure um, uh, Dr. G knows that when you take a foreign body part and put it in your body. You're going to take on the personality of that potty, uh -oh. uh, that, that person. Uh -oh. So you're going to have psychological problems, and you're going to end up knitting or doing some other new uh, weird behavioral. shit. Right. Yes, because your Our body's brain. adjusting to the holographic cell restructure. So all the stuff that they're doing is it's not going to last forever. It's total bullshit. And if you're going to if you if you're going to go steal body parts and harvest people like animals, you don't need to do that anymore. Doctor. It's going to be gone eventually. I don't. I, I, it's no excuse for it. I'm not saying there's right. no excuse at all. Those people, all of them, should be brought to justice. That 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 kid that has been through that. Somebody needs to go in and actually uh, do pro bono work and work for that woman and find out so p people can point the figure out of who's done this and right. take them to justice and not just like oh you know this drops you know 50 people were killed in Paris everybody forget about oh now it's people people are completely desensitized to to everything to everything right to yeah, everything I, you know, I, doc uh, two uh, things i need you to cover yeah, yeah. the 3d printing mm -hmm. and you you had a resource for Kendrick's mom her name is Jackie by the way right. Kendrick right. Johnson's mom right. the resource what is it yeah uh, uh it's parents of murdered children it was started by Sharon Tate Sharon uh, Sharon Tate's mother 
Uh, Sharon Tate was murdered by Charles Manson many, many years ago. And I was actually an advisor to parents of murdered children. And they'd have meetings and would basically be moms talking about the status of finding the perpetrator. And it was, it, it, it's not a sorority or fraternity you want to be a part of. Mm. But parents of murdered children, looks like they're having an event, Jackie, if you're still watching or listening. It looks like it's in July 2016. You should go and be a speaker there. So mm. absolutely, it's, a, it's in Florida. It's not yeah. that far away. Uh, I think they would pay for you to go there. They pay your expenses. Parents have murdered children. Just look it up. It's uh, you a great find idea. It. And th and three D printing. Uh, 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 the, yeah, the inventor of that was a guy named Tim Maloney. He's in Virginia. He was uh, uh, initially it was done for the space program, but um, I talked. To the, I just talked to the guy this morning. But uh, that whole thing has taken off, and they're three D three D printing organs. And there's a whole future there where people don't even really know about, but it's happening now. So. We gotta take a quick break. <laughs> Turn this shit up. <laughs> you are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Hey, what's up? It's Tom Logan the House, and you're tuned into T Radio V. I'm Laura Somoza. I'm Sterling Gardner. And we are Between the Sheets every Monday here, 3 p.m., tradiov.com. T Radio V. That's right. It's T Radio V, Radio in TV. <laughs> what is that face? <laughs> she wants to see our hands. That's Radio in TV. Wah, 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 wah. We're not a couple. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ty Simpkins. Miss Danielle Basuti. Hi, this is Brooke Peoples. I'm Jocelyn Donahue. Hi, I'm Keegan Allen, and you're watching T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Is that right? Yes. Yes. T Radio V. Yo. <laughs> T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Radio V. What did you play opposite Andy and Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I played, I played a news anchor and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is, is that going to play my sister? You played his wife, Denise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with that. He's got a great range as an actor. And, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. Hi, I'm Rob Hubel from Welcome to the Jungle. You're watching T Radio V, aren't you? Radio on TV. Terrible idea. In TV. You shut up. <laughs> Use that one. <laughs> you are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. If you don't stop, you gon' lose what you got left. I'd rather die trying to fight for my last breath. Freedom of death, you will sleep in a war zone. Live in a nightmare, dying in your own home. Some of y'all will disagree with me on my perspective on uh, 12 Years a Slave. Come on. Some of you believe that we don't need another movie about a slave. Because we are always getting negative information about us thrown at us. I agree with you. But I also agree that only telling African children about how great they were 5,000 years ago without telling them how they came to be the post-traumatic slavery disordered individuals they are today ain't serving them either. I believe in a balanced approach to teaching history. I believe we should teach them the greatness of the pyramids, but we should also teach them what made us what we are now. Okay? You don't solve problems unless you understand how you got to be that way. And for me, 12 Years a Slave will be, will be used as a teaching video in my school. Why? Because there's scenes from this movie that illustrate well how we came to be the white people lovers we are. There's some scenes in this movie that illustrate well 
how we came to be the self-hating Africans that we are right now. Yes, it was published by Brad Pitt, produced by Brad Pitt. I'm no fan of Brad Pitt, okay, who cheated on Robin Gibbons when she was with Mike Tyson. But anyway. <laughs> and it was another white man saved the day movie too, right? Brad Pitt saved the day. I'm getting sick and tired of white men saved the day. <clears throat> but because it was a true story, not fiction, it was non-fiction. There's some aspects of this movie that can be used to help educate about post-traumatic slavery. We gotta be real and realistic here. Yes, we were around before enslavement. And yes, a lot of us were not enslaved or descendants of enslaved, but many of us were. My ancestors did come through the Great Mile. Okay? And in my school, I gotta teach our children about post-traumatic slavery disorder, and I'm gonna use this movie. Next, if you're not exercising, you need to start exercising. These are all current newspaper articles that I'm giving you now. Out of Los Angeles, many people may have thought they've done well, they've done what they needed if they met the government's suggestion of 150 minutes a week of moderate activity. Apparently not. People who replace even a half hour of sitting around with 30 minutes of light activity can improve their health. A sedentary lifestyle is associated with a variety of poor health outcomes, including increased incidence of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and mortality. We gotta exercise, y'all. If you drive a lot like me, you gotta choose a day of the week where you don't drive at all. You won't get on public transportation. If you can walk, walk. Take the steps instead of the elevator. You have to get more active. The reason many of us are coming down with these diseases is because life now is too comfortable. You don't have to walk anymore. You don't have to jog. You don't have to run. That's where the disease is coming from. And the white man wants you to get sick because that's how he gets paid. Okay? American medicine is based on what? Cut and stitch and draw. That's all they do. They don't, re they don't reverse no disease. You notice that? White man don't reverse nothing. He cuts, he stitches, he draws. That's it. And that's called practicing medicine. So we got to get active, we got to make sure our kids are active. Too much time spent on video games and laptops is killing us. You got to get up and act. Get an exercise bike in your house. Get the uh, stair master, the bunny buster, whatever you need. But get your exercise on, okay? Don't underestimate the impact of sit-ups and push-ups. Don't underestimate the act of sit-ups and push-ups. Very important to keep the body healthy. Jumping jacks, very important to keep the body healthy. Let's talk about white privilege. Everybody remember the Dark Knight killer? Aurora, Colorado, you ever remember that? Yeah. White man went into the Dark Knight movie and killed all those people. Well, guess what? He still hasn't been convicted. Mm. Listen to this. A new psychiatric examination is ordered for the theory of gunman. A judge on Wednesday ordered a new psychiatric examination for James Holmes, who killed 12 people inside an Aurora, Colorado theater, July 2012, saying that an earlier evaluation by a state doctor was incomplete and inadequate. The ruling by Judge Carlos Samora orders the state mental hospital to have a new mental health expert examine Mr. Holmes and offer an opinion on whether he was sane. Offer an opinion on whether he was sane. They're trying to get him off on the insanity plea. This man killed 12 people in a theater, and they're trying to let him walk. They said the last evaluation wasn't complete, so we need a more complete one because we think he might have been insane when he was dressed up. I like playing uh, videos that cause us to think, that pushes us. This, listen, there ain't nothing perfect about me. I am flawed to the nth degree. Not all my relationships are good, right? I don't have an answer for every fucking thing, right? But my heart is in the right place. My intentions are in the right place. Guess what? I'm just like you. I do not reach my intent every time. I fall short of my intentions Shit, damn near 50, 50 percent of the time, probably 65, 70, 80 percent of the time. I fall short of my intention. 
I am flawed. But that does not mean we still shouldn't get together and work together. That's right. And I mean across cultural lines. The 1% are the sponsors of racism. Yeah. The 1% are the sponsors and the maintainers of the infrastructure of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. They're the sponsors of education. They're, listen, watch how, watch how, they're the sponsor of what is normal. And what is dreamed after. Oh, I, I so want this house. They're the sponsors of that, right? And by being the sponsors of that, they are also the sponsors of chaos. Yes. They keep people looking at other people sideways. They keep envy alive. They keep greed alive. Do, do, do you understand what's happening here? Because if you remove some of the social constructs that create the conflict that keep the 99% separate, now the 1% get their ass kicked 99% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the game. You got motherfuckers who still, after all the information this man has dropped on the show, that nigga's old man. He got white people and shit on the show. <laughs> they missed the whole point. One dude told me the mm -hmm. show is becoming a bastion of white supremacy. What? <laughs> I was like, if I saw this nigga in person, thank you. Because most niggas ain't gonna say that to it, me. It, Boy. And when I say nigga, I mean niggas. <laughs> because you know a motherfucker will take what you say and twist it. He calling mm -hmm. us niggas in front of white people. No, I'm calling you the niggas version. Because to me, nigga and niggas mean the same thing. For me. Yeah. Did, did we not break it down is, the word the same. well enough? Right. Do we not explain right. that the word nigga means God? Right. Sovereign. Nigga. Niggas. Nigger. Right. Nedger. Naga. Naga. <laughs> Niger. Right. Niger. Nigeria. Do we have to... Nagini. Ninigini, all of it is ours. Yeah. I bring people together who have valuable information. Information don't have no color. Thank you. Knowledge is not racial. Thank you. Consciousness is not racial. Consciousness <laughs> is not racial. So I bring people with valuable information that could change your life. Here we sit today. Talking about a scourge on the black community that you didn't know about. Margaret Sanger, who created Planned Parenthood, said it plainly. Said it plainly. Fuck niggas. Yep. We can't ah. have them breeding. Right. They're imbecilic. Wait, imbecilic. Let's get the SAT mm -hmm. word in this bitch. They're imbecilic. Stupid. They do, they're lazy. They don't contribute anything. Right? To American culture, mm -hmm. we have to prune that society. And she spoke at 12 Klan rallies saying that to people. <laughs> you had Hitler. He said another way, useless eaters. Fuck you doing with your life. <laughs> All I do is come and present this kind of information. You look at it this way. Just see it this way. Every belief system that's running right now is sponsored by somebody. The modern day gang culture, who sponsored that belief? What is the purpose of y'all existence? <laughs> I got a sister who's a nurse in Philly, young 17 year old boy killed, but he's hooked up to the machines. He's technically dead, shot in the head. He's technically dead. She said there's a company, I text her and I asked her the name of this company, but she didn't hit me back. She said there's a company who couldn't wait to talk to his people so they can get them 17 year old organs. Damn. She said he was dead, technically. The machine was breathing for him, bullet, brain oozing out, but 17-year-old kidney, 17-year-old lung, 17-year-old eyes. We can get all that. And she said the way they were circling, they were like buzzards just circling around the body, waiting for his people to come so they could sign off. 
See, somebody paying those top brat, those top bracket gang members to keep this bullshit going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody, Chicago, Chirac, somebody at the top of the high. Everything has a hierarchy. Yeah. Your house has a hierarchy. The church got a hierarchy. Your job got a hierarchy. The gang's got to have a hierarchy. Yeah, and at the top of that hierarchy, somebody's breading up. For them to have 50 people shot in one weekend? 50? Where? In Chicago. I got to take a quick break. When we come back, 50. what we got? Final thought? <laughs> when we come back, final thought. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. I'm Grant Reynolds, Grant Reynolds. Oh. I don't know what to do with my hands. I mean, this is pretty much just like the same thing. With oh, wait, this is... No one wants to see her ninny goats. <gasps> like a yeah. bear. He's like a big bear, yeah. is he? Like, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, we'll start... If you don't like the right pizza, go f yourself. <laughs> you never know who should have shot Shin Chai Chai. Absolutely, I think that my story. show is better than yours. Yes, it is. No, it's, no, it's not. not. Yes, it is. No, no it's, it's not. not. It is. No, no it's not. not. The only thing that masks alcohol while you're driving is peanuts. Peanuts? Peanuts? Peanut? Have Peanut. lots of <laughs> when you're drinking. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time Langdon had Skippy in his mouth. What about your dog? T-Radio, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Throw another log in the fire. It's not hot enough back here. T Radio V, Radio and TV. Ay ay ay! T Radio V. And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically naughty. naughty. I'm never politically correct. Dr. Dr. Drew, Drew hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so hey guys, how are you? I'm all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wishes she could live at rehab. <laughs> if only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. plus one, like, you know, because a little too groping might be inappropriate, but I like the flirting. Well, and stuff. When I, when I, I walked in, know. you shoved my head in your no! Are you going to sue me? <laughs> Get Politically Naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. on T-Radio V. Yo, what's up, what's up? This is Too Short and you're watching T-Radio V. You are watching T-Radio V. Radio in TV. Full circle moment. I have on the line right now Wanda Trotter. Wanda Trotter is the sister who created the Zoe Williams app. I want you guys to meet her and I want you to do business with her because it's a full circle moment. Wanda, come in really quickly. Hello. Good morning. Hey, how are you? You you know you're supposed to be in at the top of the hour. But you're at the end of the show, but that's fine. Tell people how they connect with you and what your business is about. Well, my business is about growing your business and increasing your profits through the use of a mobile app. Right. Uh, getting more a more branded experience with your audience mm -hmm. and a lot of things that can be done with a mobile app. But it's basically about growing your business. And I would say any black business that I support on this show should contact Wanda Trotter so she can set up putting a black uh, 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 um, a business app together for you. She did my app, and we're somewhere near 2,000 uh, downloads right now. So she's the real deal. Get with her. She's going to enhance your business. You know, apps are taking over. Apps are now the new website because everybody's got a mobile phone. So the app is part of that 
infrastructure and it makes it just quicker more easier access and there are many commerce solutions inbuilt in the app and the best app designer i know wanda trotter what's the name of your company and what is an email address they can connect with you on my website is mindblowingmobile.com mindblowingmobile.com my email is wanda at mindblowingmobile.com and my business is Worldwide Solutions. So there it is. Wanda, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for chiming in. Now let me get this final thought off. Thank you, too. Have a great one. All right, honey. Why I got Wanda on? First off, let me just say this. Krishnamurti, my favorite philosopher. And every time he did a speech, he would say, the speaker is not important. He would say, we are doing this together or we are not doing it at all. <laughs> right? He did not, hey, he was like, the work is yours to do. The word guru, right? Sanskrit, dispeller of darkness. That's a fucking light bulb. Right? Once I turn on the light bulb, it's your job to see. I ain't supposed to see it for you. I'm not supposed to do it for you. A lot of times, Dr. G brought this up. A lot of times people get feel like they get a charge from me because I'm turned up. I'm angry. I'm disappointed. So they go, yeah, I'm disappointed with Zoe. Because Zoe's disappointed. <laughs> and I, I share in Zoe's disappointment. But then, you know, I feel good because somebody disappointed about this shit. So I can go on about my bullshit ass life because somebody else mad about it. Fuck that. <laughs> If we don't do the work, I promote every week, get these businesses, work with these businesses. Why is it important? Why did I start to show about black business? Because it's black infrastructure. It's black political infrastructure. It's, it's black economic infrastructure. When you have that kind of infrastructure, it's harder to harvest your organs. Does that make absolutely? It, you don't see white organs going like that. No, it's harder. <laughs> it's listen. They've already told you who's getting it. Third world countries, and it's happening in African American society. How, how the fuck Tamar Rice just get shot in the head? Oh, he had a fake gun. Well, you shouldn't point it. You shouldn't point a fake gun. There was a white woman who who got arrested. She was pointing a gun at the police and it was real they just arrested her they talked her down oh he's 12 them motherfucking organs is fresh <laughs> them organs is green they were able to grow see it's a new <laughs> listen it's a it's a new kind of vampire here what are the poor doing right now the poor are running to the blood banks to sell plasma right. for money there's a new kind of uh, vampire here. And I'm tired of uppity niggas being the new Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate, right? Chocolate Fanta. Fanta. <laughs> Fanta was that woman in Roots. Yeah. G got Kunta's foot cut off for her because he believing she's still down with the African movement. Right. He fucking escapes. Gets to her plantation. She said, no, this womb is for Massa now. Don't you come in me. This is Massa's womb for Massa's babies. She had already locked in to the social template of, wow. this is where we are. We ain't getting the fuck back to Africa. We might as well get down <laughs> with the program. Wow. We have become a nation of Fantas. He said, uh, Fanta. She said, my name ain't Fanta. My name is Maggie now. Fanta was that African <laughs> shit. Don't call me that no more. You can have some pussy, but don't <laughs> come in me because this is Master's womb. This is who we are. Every aspect of our life is defined by servitude, subjugation. Yes, and you get mad because I'm mad, and you feel like, well, I got my mad charge off. I can go on about a uh, direct TV bill is due. <laughs> <laughs> you you understand? Like, well, let me go on about this regular mundane shit I do on the daily.
man if we don't turn this shit around I don't give a fuck what you gotta do find a black business support it I don't give a fuck what you gotta do you come here you find black businesses all the time call to action I need a hundred book sales right now I got a hundred copies I just ordered some more I need a hundred book sales right now go to imzowilliams.com and purchase the relationship dismount but don't just buy my shit Buy all the black businesses out there. Go get that money back to them. And then we got to come together and put together some kind of central organization. That's the, that's the key. That's the key. <laughs> Tony B. Conscious, where can they find you? Yo, you can find me on Instagram. Tony underscore B underscore Conscious. Um, it's Black History Month, y'all. Hit me up if you're at a black college or something. Hit me up. I'm trying to do all your events. Make sure you definitely hit me up. Uh, you can get at me um, on my website. That's uh, Body Boxing or 3Bbootcamp.com. The number three slash BBB online. Or you can get at me on um, the YouTube channel Real Nagas. R E E L N A G A S. Uh, at Mark, uh, go to at Mark Goulston. Tweet me, follow me. I have 57,000 followers. If you add to that and you give me tweets you want me to tweet of your stuff, I'll put it out to all my followers. Also, this is uh, just started on Kindle, $1.99. $1.99 this month. Uh, so I uh, hope you'll support that. Thanks. And you can find me, James Martinez, on jamesmartinezmedia.net. I am zoewilliams.com. Sign up for my coaching. Sign up for my books. Follow my movement. Download my app. I uh, Zoe Williams, all one word, no space. Z O Williams. Download the app. I iOS platform as well as uh, Google Play. Continue to support the movement, or it ain't a movement. Stop filling out those organ donor contracts. Stop filling out the organ donor contracts at the DMV. We'll be back. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> <laughs> And come inside with no ticket, irrelevant, pseudo intelligent motherfuckers. The cone is the invisible elephant in the room. Before we can learn to merge, we need to learn to purge these motherfuckers from our circle. They show weakness to our enemy, work to disrupt the peace, then report back and forth to the peace. <laughs> You are watching T-Radio V, radio in TV.